morning you guys happy halloween best day of the year in my opinion i have just gone up made a coffee um i took the dog out earlier so it's just gone up for about 20 past seven i've got back into bed because i'm just as you would have seen just logged on to youtube to let you guys know that there will be no video up today so you're watching this on halloween which is why i'm wishing you a happy halloween but actually i'm filming this yesterday so i'm speaking to you guys in the future i obviously would usually put my videos up on a monday but I promised that I will be announcing the giveaway winner, which I will be doing in this vlog, so stay tuned. Um, I said I would be announcing them on, on Halloween, so this video will go live on Halloween, which is when you'll be watching it, which is now. So, like I say, I've just took the dog out. Um, I took him out about quarter past six. The clocks went back here in the UK. Um which completely messes up everybody's sleep schedule. I'm a terrible sleeper as it is anyway, as you guys will know. So any mix up to that routine that I already struggle with just makes it 10 times worse. So I've actually been laying wide awake in bed since about 20 to five. Technically it's 20 to six because the body clock's still functioning pre clocks going back. But that's not gonna be very good in the long run because my body is gonna be exhausted. Today I am in skills week. Um, which literally for the whole of the week it's skills labs and it's a very heavy week however we do get clinical placement hours for it if we stay the whole week if we do the whole week we'll get like, I think it's 35 to 40 hours which I really really need because I am already massively behind on hours as you will know if you've been there before I owe 142 hours from last year so I need to make them up which is difficult to do in like extra hours every single week when you're on placement. It's exhausting, it's manageable, but it's tiring, obviously. So having an opportunity to scrape back 40 of those 142 hours is really, really massively beneficial to me. It just sucks that it's every single day in the week, but it is what it is. So that's what I'm doing this week. Um, I'm just going to finish my coffee and then go and have some breakfast and get ready. I haven't eaten yet because... Um, I'm just not hungry. Right now I'm just not very hungry so I'm just going to finish my coffee and then I'm going to go down and have something to eat, get dressed and then I'm going to come back up and talk to you guys really quickly about my first semester of nursing school again. Um, if you're wondering how can it be the first semester fair when you are in your fourth year. Uh, I am a fourth year nursing student, yes that is correct. I am a qualified adult nurse however I have never done mental health nursing until this year, so I'm technically actually a first year student. It's a very, very weird situation to be in because when we got onto placement, this is one of the worries that we've brought up as, as a cohort. We've brought up the worry that we're gonna go onto placement and as soon as we say we're fourth years, you know, placement are gonna be rubbing their hands together like they've struck gold until we turn around and say, actually, we've never done this before. <laughs> we haven't got a clue what we're doing. So it's a very, very strange, strange situation to be in. But I'm going to check back in with you guys in a little while. I'm back. I'm ready. I've got about 10 minutes to speak to you guys. I'm hoping that I can get through this really, really quickly. Uh, I'm very, very hot, but I don't like to show the university I go to for numerous reasons. So I put my fleece over the top and I'm absolutely sweltering hot. Um, so my first semester of nursing school, as I explained before, it is my first. As much as people will say, well, it's obviously not. It is because I'm now doing mental health nursing. I'm not touching adult nursing. Obviously, I will touch on adult nursing as I'm out dealing with adults. Um, but as far as like physical health goes, I won't be doing that. Possibly touch on a little bit of it, but it'll be a completely new realm. So we were told that when we started this degree, um, started applying for our this master's, 
that we wouldn't need to do a dissertation because we've just done our three years in our original chosen field and we wouldn't need to do one because we're only doing our second field for a year so that was a nice relief until last week we found out we have got the world's biggest meanest most difficult dissertation to do so that was a nice culture shock, nice little wake up call. Um, we have to do a literature review, which doesn't sound difficult, but for those who are in healthcare or university of any kind, and you have to do research and you yourself will know what it's like going through literature reviews, I have to be peer reviewed and the processes of even reading a literature review. I will talk more about my dissertation literature review in a moment, but I'm just gonna do it in order. So I've already finished a class, which was the anatomy, physiology, pharmacology, pharmacodynamics, all four in one. That's how my university do it. That's how they've always done it. We don't have a separate session. Obviously we do them on separate sessions, but we don't have separate classes split throughout the year for each of those categories. We do it all in one whack, which is very, very heavy, um, but it's good to just get it out of the way. So that is for our exam that we have in January, our big anatomy, physiology, patho pathophysiology, pharmacology exam all in one so again we don't have split exams per um, module we don't have individual exams we don't have a pharmacology exam then a patho exam then an AMP exam it's literally all in one exam so that again that's a big 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 exam that's coming up in January so that's what our first class was uh, I'll show you my file so I have my file which is a massive because I used to, many moons ago in my first year, used to print out some of the um, PowerPoints, but now I just literally do all my own notes. So I guess it's a bit like my own study guide, I guess. I just go on to the PowerPoints, which our lecturers set up prior to class. I write my notes up prior to class. There's a study tip. I have put that in my study tip videos before, is that I always, if your institute um, does what ours does, which is upload the PowerPoints before the session, so that you can read over the material. Um, I always do that and write my notes up prior to class so that when I get into class, I can concentrate on what the lecturer is talking about. Yes, they will be rerunning through the PowerPoint, but I have ADHD and I'm autistic and my attention span in classrooms being talked at for hours on end just doesn't work. So I found that I was wasting time trying to listen to what the lecturer was saying, hurry up and write down the notes and I was missing so much information. So now I write my notes up before I go into class and then anything additional, then I will add it in whilst I'm in class. But if not, then then great. Class is a lot easier. Um, but yeah, so we do it in... How do we... I'm trying to explain how we section it out. So we do it body system by body system. However, it's a little bit different because this is mental health nursing. So yes, we still do it in the body systems, but we haven't done all the body systems because for the exam, we don't need it because it's concentrating more on mental health. So we did the cardiovascular respiratory system in mental health and um, I won't go through every single thing I taught you taught you through it and and uh, bore you to tears but I literally do all my notes before class um, using colours I am a visual learner so colours help me a lot that was a big section cardio and, and respiratory and um, so there at the beginning you'll see it's talking about the actual um, physiology of it so this is like the valves of the heart, then a little bit further on, the pathophysiology of the systems. Um, oh, this is really difficult to show, the light is shining down. Um, and then I'm sure it's got medications, so there's the pharmacology to it. So you can see how it works, so the same thing goes on to the next section, which is about genetics related to mental health. Again, it will all break, be broken down into about what genetics are, how they affect mental health causes, schizophrenia, things like that. So that is what we have done in my first class which is now finished there's a little bit more to learn on pharmacology like extra work they've put on for us to look through which was to be done out of class we don't have to do it but i will be doing it closer to the exam time just to refresh my brain so that is that class which i found without sounding a, a, a bit ignorant i found it quite easy but I think that's because I've learned my study flow and how I best study, which is my always my number one study tip to you guys. Always find your study style. If you don't know what I mean by that, check out my other study videos or Google what is my study style. So I, as I say, I'm a visual learner, so I like colours, I like things in order, I like sections to things, I like things being put in boxes and I, I'm also a kinesthetic learner, so I like to physically write my notes out like that instead of typing them because when it comes to 
reiterating things it's a little bit like muscle memory in my hand so I'll remember what I wrote if that makes any sense um, so I like to write my notes out over and over and over again, which will seem time consuming to a lot of people and a waste of time, but that's what works for me. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> if you are an audio learner, <coughs> things like audiobooks, podcasts, listening to YouTube videos as opposed to watching them um, will help. But if you've like, I, I'm listening to class, you're probably quite good at listening in class, but I am just, I'm not. It doesn't work for me that well. Mm. Really tickly throat. So yeah, that was my A&P, patho and pharmacology class, all in one big whack. Then the dissertation. So the dissertation, we I think it has to be in in February. We are now nearly in November, um, two days away from November as I'm filming this. And then we go on to placement next week up until Christmas and then we have our exam. And then we have our dissertation to be in. So I don't know how this is going to be possible whatsoever um, I know it's going to be a very very stressful time trying to get it done because it's not just a simple essay so our our um, dissertation is not to go and read up on a topic and write about it I wish it was, I wish it was that simple no, we are doing a literature review so we are actually having to write those literature reviews that you see online that you use for your essays we've got to write one of them um, as detailed and as well polished as them we're at a master's level so we're working at level seven so it's very the jump from level six to level seven is huge i didn't think it would be that bad um and our percentage pass mark has increased as well so it's even harder to even just get a pass which i'm gutted about because not saying saying that i'm not going to pass it but i think i will just pass with how difficult this is which is then gonna I'll, i will finish my degree with a pass which I'm, I'm gutted about because i finished my first three years with a one one which is a first class which is as high as you can get so if i had graduated at that point my paperwork would say that i finished with a first class honors whereas with my dissertate with my masters it doesn't really matter about what i got in my first three years it's kind of like an overall thing with all these scores as well so if i'm just getting passes it will probably bring it down to an overall pass which i'll be a bit gutted about but I am going to strive for for obviously a distinction, obviously, um, but I'm just not going in with rose tinted glasses because, as I say, if you are in education and you are in university and you are looking at literature reviews, they are so even confusing to just read through. We have to write one. Not only do we have to write one, we were told that we have to write it to a point of they're going to try and get one, two, three, or as many of them can in class, get them published so that is the level we are working at which is very very stressful and we can't even start the writing to the dissertation until well into january and that's not by choice that's what our lecturers advised we only had two sessions two lectures that's it that's all we've had on this dissertation which again is really difficult the lecturer is there at the other end of the phone if we need her and she'll, she'll email us and things but two taught sessions on this dissertation yeah so she said that the amount of reading we're going to have to do is huge. Uh, we're going to have to read lots of rich literature reviews. doesn't have to be around the subject that we want to do it on, just so we get a feel of how to write the literature review, to see the common patterns in them, to see what's expected of us. Once we've got into a good habit of really getting uh, a literature review, I know we've read them for the past three years, I've done my assignments for three years and I've obviously used hundreds of them, but you don't, if we're being honest, you don't read the whole article, you read sections that you need and that's what you go off. We're having to read the full article because we need to know how to put all the extra, like the references with the links in to take you to other articles. You'll know what I mean, they're usually highlighted in blue. You click them, it takes you to another page. We're having to do all of that. Um, we have to, as part of our dissertation, every single thing that we search, so anything that we search that brings us to an article that relates to the article that we're writing, this is probably confusing, and if you're still with me with this, God bless you because it's very 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 complex um, anything that we find that that links to the article that we want to write we have to have a box have a table within our you would have seen them in literature reviews it's often like a table halfway down um, and we have to have a step-by-step -step guide on every single one of the articles that we've used to put information to gain information off to make our own article and we have to put the step by step 
of how we got to the article. We also have to put a step-by-step -step on articles that we have chosen not to use, the reasoning behind them, were they out of date, were they not peer-reviewed, things like that. So we, not only are we having to write down the ones we've used, we're having to write down ones that we haven't used, that we've gone and read, and then we have to explain why it wasn't good enough to use in our article. Like, Basically, our lecturer said, you're probably going to start off, when you start looking at your subject, you're probably going to start off with about 500 articles that you need to narrow down to about 10. So, <laughs> that's where I'm at with my master's degree, in case anyone's wondering why I've gone a little bit quiet on my social media platforms lately. I'm struggling, and I'm going to be totally honest, it's a lot. I also haven't had my support put in place in university, and without going into it too much, because it's really boiled my blood, um... Apparently, they didn't even know I had a disability until the other day. It was the first they knew, despite them having known for three years. Uh, so the support that I've been needing to get into place in regards to learning from home, apart from skills labs, it doesn't look like it's going to happen. So I'll quickly show you how I am prepping for my dissertation and how I am filing things, how I am just organising myself, basically. So I got myself one of these stretchy binders to be really quick because I'm going to be late um, and I started to print off articles shit you don't have to print off the ones that we just have to read through to get an idea of how the literature reviews are going um, you don't have to be related to your subject but I thought it would make more sense to get them related to my subject so I can get into a habit of knowing what to write and, and get an idea for the subject that I want to do so if you are wondering what I'm talking about when I say I won't show you the massive one for beer all day I'm saying the literature reviews I have to do one of these this is a published one genuinely I've, I've printed it off I'm having to do one of these, which looks simple to the average Joe looking at this thinking, oh, it's not that many words. It's actually 4,000 words, um, but it's the research that goes into it. And like I say, having to step by step explain every single thing that I've done. All these references, I will basically be having to show a table like that, but not only just with the links to the articles, but the reasoning as to why for every single one of them. Look how many there are. Um, and yeah, we can't do an article of anything that is already out there. So if we come across and this is another bummer. So she said, you could write this out, you could write your literature review. You could get to the end of your literature review, ready to hand it in. But if a new literature review gets published just before you hand it in, and it's identical to yours, despite you writing yours first, guess what? You can't hand it in and you've got to start again. I just, I cannot even fathom this year, to be honest, guys. But on top of that, on top of my little stretchy binder, I've got these two, so this is the literature to review. These, this is where I'm gonna literally write down every, obviously I've not started yet because we can't do the writing yet, but every time I research an article that I'm going to use or not use or whatever, I'm gonna write the step-by-step -step down in here and this is the literature to review that's gonna go into the table. And then another one for the background, which is usually the introduction of a literature review. I'm just gonna write exactly the same thing down in there, all the steps that I found for the background section. So. There is a lot going on, um, literally started brainstorming, I know it's a pathetic brainstorm for you say, but it worked for me, it was just a rough idea of the ideas of the literature review that I'm going to write, which for those who are interested, it obviously will be based around mental health, because it has to be, that's the field that I'm doing, sorry I'm rushing, I'm like, just left five minutes ago, um, but yeah, I... I'm going to be doing it on, well, I don't know for a fact because I have to make sure there's enough literature out there for me to, to study from, but I'm hopefully going to be doing it on um, something to do with prison nursing. So that's that's that for now. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you go ahead, give it a thumbs up. So sorry I'm having to speed through this last bit, but I am very, 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 very late for university right now. But yeah, make sure you hit the subscribe button and I will now leave the winner of the 1k giveaway. Thank you to everyone who's entered. I have no idea how much I appreciate every single one of you. I know I say it all the time, so I like a broken record, but it's true. Thank you so much for being on this journey with me. I'm very, very grateful. Hope you'll tune in for another video, but right now I'm going to have to go out the door. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.